Welcome to Neely Hanukkah Sparks. My name is Olivia Friedman. Today, we are going to talk about the women in the war. There are three types of women that I've noticed. We have the clever one, the warrior woman, and the defiant one. And the cool part is that all of these women actually are similar to characters that we encounter in the Tanakh. So let's begin with the clever one. That is the story of Rachel Edri, who is a modern day Yael. What happened was five terrorists came to Rachel's home in Ofakim. She kept them calm, plied them with food, secretly communicated with the police officers who came to rescue her and survive based on her quick wits. According to Wynette, she asked the terrorists if they wanted tea, coffee, and cookies. They told her to bring them, and so she bribed them, but part of it was also due to her nature. Later on, when one of the terrorists was wounded, she told him that he deserved something sweet. She gave him a can of pineapple and fed him until he fell asleep. This echoes the story of Yael, who is a heroine in the Book of Judges, who welcomed an enemy general, Sisra, to her tent. She plied him with food, waited for him to fall asleep, and murdered him with her tent peg, saving the Jewish people. Then we move on to the warrior woman. So as some of you may have seen, and if not, it's definitely worth the watch, there are a bunch of female tank commanders who were able to save Cholit. And what you see is that in the Gemara, Sota 44b, it says, B'milchamot mitzvah, aval b'milchamot chauvah, in obligatory wars, everyone goes, even a groom from his room and a bride from her wedding canopy. Some don't understand this literally, but the Rambam in Hilchos Melachim Milchamot, chapter 7, 4, actually does take it literally. And so we see here an example of women going out to war, driving those tanks, fighting off many terrorists, and that being very similar, that being what we see in the Gemara. In the Book of Judges, this parallels to some degree the Shofet at Devora accompanying Barak out to war, even though she herself doesn't appear to wage war with weapons. And then this brings us to the Defiant One, which is the story of Ramon Kirscht. Ramon was taken into captivity alongside her partner, Yagev. When she was told she was slated for release, she actually argued with Hamas. She said she didn't want to go. Either we leave together or I stay here and no one gets released, she said. And they told her that they would actually drag her out, not leaving her a choice. That having been said, they then decided to film a propaganda film. And they wanted her to pretend that she was happy and getting along and allow them to escort her and hug her. But what she said was, no one will hug us now. We will leave here alone and with our heads held high. And you could see her facing off with a Hamas terrorist in a video and moment that has actually gone viral. So she exhibited unbelievable courage. And she reminds me of two different scenarios. One is of the Hebrew midwives who defied Pharaoh, where they decided not to follow what he told them to do, even though he had all the power and they had limited power. And the other is actually another propaganda scheme that happened in the time of Hanukkah. So there was an idea that Antiochus himself wanted everyone to believe that he had control over the Jews and that he was able to get them to bow to his idol. And so a version of this story appears in Gittin 57b. And so there's an emperor and there are various children. This story is retold with a woman named Hannah and her seven children, although not in this particular Gemara. And what happens is the emperor says, I'll throw down my seal before you. Bend over and pick it up so that people will say that he has accepted the king's authority. But the boy said to him, woe to you, Caesar, if you think that for the sake of your honor, I should fulfill your command and do this. Then for the sake of the honor of the Holy One, blessed be he, all the more so should I fulfill his command. And in the story of Hannah and her seven sons, even though he's had the seal thrown down on the floor, so in theory he could bend down to pick up the seal and it would only look like he was worshiping an idol, when in reality he wouldn't be worshiping an idol, he still refuses to go along with this propaganda because he doesn't want anyone to even have the impression that he might be worshiping an idol. So what we see is that 
these women are timeless. We have these women from the Tanakh, the clever one who placates the enemy but secretly plots against them, Yael. And in modern day, we have Rachel, the warrior woman who goes out to protect innocence, which is either the woman from the Gemara, the bride, or Devorah, and then the women today, the Tink uh, women. And then the defiant one who refuses to bow to corrupt people in power. We have Hannah <laughs> herself. We have the midwives by Pharaoh. And we also have Ramon. And it's just amazing to realize the power of women and the power of Judaism to speak to us in every situation and across all the ages.